Now that we've gotten the basics of NURP modeling, it's time to get into the basics of polygonal modeling. So polygonal modeling is very different while also being very similar to NURB modeling. We have a lot more control over what we make and how we edit it. And usually it's the go-to for creating pretty much anything in a 3D space. NURBs are usually used for things like simple objects like glasses or eyeballs or very simple things that need low geometry while still being very smooth. Polygonal modeling is pretty much everything and anything you would want to make, you can make it with polygons. So one thing I want to show you is I'm going to create a NURB sphere just like this. And what I'll do is I'll then create a polygon sphere. And we're going to just take a look at both of them. So by default, you can see a vast difference between the two. They're both very smooth objects, but you can see how the polygon object right here has so much more geometry than the NURB object. So it's very interesting. And what we're going to do is, let's just say I changed the subdivision axis to the exact same dimensions as the polygonal one this is essentially what they would look both look like so this is the nerve this is the polygon but this is them with the same amount of geometry it's crazy one of the very important things about polygonal objects is the more geometry you have the more details you have so what I have right here is a cube just as very simple, if I look at my inputs, the subdivision width, height, and depth are all one. And let's just move this one over to the side. I'm going to create another cube by pressing, oops. Sorry about that. Just create another cube right there. And I'm going to change this to four by four by four. And I'm going to create one more cube and I'm going to change that to, let's go with 10 by 10 by 10. So right from the get-go, all three of these cubes look exactly the same. And that's because they're in hard edge mode. What that means is it's showing the exact geometry and how it should be looking. And what we could do is we could put them into smooth edge mode to see what they look like rounded out. So if you look at your keyboard and you hit 1, that is hard edge mode. And what we'll do is I'm going to switch them to smooth edge mode by hitting three on my keyboard. What that does is it will round out all the edges and smooth them into what they would look like rendered out. So I'm going to hit three. And now you can see that they're very different. So my one by one by one cube came out becoming this somewhat uh, spherical object while our four by four by four, correct, yeah, is much more of a cube shape but you can see those rounded edges and if we look at our 10 by 10 by 10 one same deal it is that cube shape but it also has those rounded edges but you see that they're more defined if i ended up changing this to let's just say a 30 by 30 by 30 or let's just say 20 by 20 by 20 it gets even more and more defined so the more geometry you have the more detailed it will be smoothed out. So let's just get rid of all these. And let's get to creating something. So I'm just going to create a cube. And we're going to go over pretty much all the general tools or the basic tools you'll need in creating any model. So I'm going to start. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a very basic house. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my object. I'm going to go to Mesh Tools. And I'm going to go to what's called the Insert Edge Loop Tool. So the Insert Edge Loop Tool is basically an, uh, an, uh, a tool where you click on any of these edges. And if I drag around, you'll see this dotted line going around in a 3D space. And what it will do is it will take those faces that we have and split them. So before we even do that, let's actually go into the basics of our object. So, if you remember working with NURBS, 
we had things like control vertices and holes and object mode. If I right click, I have a couple more things that we can work with. So we have object mode, which works the exact same way as we did before with the, the nerves. We have edge mode, which will allow us to select specific edges and modify them as we please. We have vertex, which works very similar to the control vertex. We also now have face, and that will allow us to select specific polygons and modify the face. Other than that, we have vertex, face, multi, and UV, which we're not going to really use that much. But understanding and knowing how each one of those works is extremely useful in understanding how to model something because we're going to be using all those pretty frequently. So getting back to creating our house, what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to raise this up just to get it on top of the grid. Makes it a little easier to see things. Let's just center. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Mesh Tools and insert edge loop like we did before. And I'm going to put an edge loop right about, let's just say halfway along the horizontal uh, face. So I'm going to be selecting a vertical edge because it's going to create a perpendicular line across. So I'll just go about halfway there. If it's not perfect, that's okay. And I'm going to hit Q to end the command. Q is just easiest, uh, the easiest shortcut to end the command. It just goes back to the object select tool. And now if I look at it, we have this slice going all the way around my cube. So let me get back to the front of it. And the next tool we're going to use is by far one of the most important tools and most confusing tools to use. And that's going to be the extrusion tool. So what that extrusion tool does is for instance this face right here, I'm going to use this and then we're going to create a door. So I'm going to go right click, drag to face mode, click on this door right here or this face right here. And I'm going to go to edit mesh and then extrude. So what an extrusion does is it basically takes that face and creates a whole series of faces around that object. You can't see them right now, but once we start editing it, you'll see it. So what we have is all three of those arrows for the moving move tool. We also have the three cubes for the scale tool and the center area right here. So if I click on the center area right there, or actually if I click on any of these cubes, you'll see a light blue cube pop up. That will give us our scaling along all three axes, which is going to be the most useful one of them all. But we're not going to use it right now. We also have this icon right here, which will allow us to select the object in the world or in the object mode, which will make more sense later on. But first, let us make a door. So I'm going to start with the x-axis scale. So I'm going to scale that in like that. And then I'm going to use the y-axis scale to bring it on down. So as you can see, that face that we were working with now has four other faces around it. It increases the amount of geometry we have in a certain area and makes things a lot easier to work with. So let's just scale that a little bit more. I'm just going to lower that here. You're not really supposed to do something like that, but we're going to leave it like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another extrusion. So I could always go to edit mesh and extrude. You could also hit command E or control E to create another extrusion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the G key. So what the G key does is it will repeat the last command. So in the case of this extrusion, it will create another extrusion. So I'm going to keep the face selected. I'm going to hit G and that did another extrusion. I'm going to use the Z axis move tool. I'm just going to use that to push in the door. And we now have a nice doorway right there. So our house is starting to come together a little bit. Pretty nice. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to try to make some two windows here. This is going to be a very basic house, but it'll get all the ideas we need to go through right on off the bat. So I'm going to go to Mesh Tools. I'm going to insert another edge loop. And I'm going to click on one of these horizontal lines to make a vertical edge. And I'm going to try to get it roughly in the center. If it's off, that's OK. This is just for a demo. And now we have a lot more geometry on our cube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face. And I'm going to hold Shift and select this face. And then I'm going to go and create 
another extrusion. So this is where things get a little tricky. If I wanted to extrude this and I hit this cube and scaled it, you can see they both scaled inwards like that. I don't really want that unless I want a really big window right there, but I want two small windows right here and right here. That's why we put that edge loop in. So what we're going to use is the extrusion settings right here. So we don't really need to work too much into here, into these details, but the key face together is the thing we want to work on first. So I'm going to click on key face together, turn it off, and now when I scale it, it will scale them as if they were two separate objects I was extruding at once. So now instead of that one face, or those two faces being extruded as one, we now have two faces being extruded separately, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to hit G to do another extrusion, push it in a little bit just so we kind of see our windows a little better. And look at that. We've got a nice portion of our house done. So we're going to start working on the roof. So for the roof, we could do a bunch of different things. I could go in and select these faces and do another extrusion, bring them upwards and like scale them inwards like that. If we want to create a, a roof like that or like that. But one of the easiest things that I like to do with it is simply go to edge mode. So I'll right click, drag to edge, click on the edge right here, press W for the move tool, and literally raise the roof. Pretty simple, gets everything done, but it's always up to you what you want to do for your design. So that's pretty much the basics on how to create the house itself. Right now we're going to do uh, a nice little chimney and we could do the chimney a couple different ways but I'm going to show you a specific way just because it will get those tools set up for you. So for a chimney what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face mode I'm going to select one of these faces on the roof and I'm going to hit command E or control E for an extrusion and I'm just going to scale it inwards right around right there. So I'm going to try to make that face a bit boxy. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll just be a little easier that way. And what we now have is a little spot for our chimney. Now if we wanted to, we could extrude this upwards, but we're going to just do this a different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this face. So to delete it, I'm actually going to have it selected like it is right now, and I'm going to hit delete. And that's really cool because now we have a hole in our, our 3D object which is good and bad. You can actually go inside and see what the inside looks like. Nothing really exciting, but just to show how this is a 3D object. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my house and I'm going to move it to the side a little bit just so we can create a new cube and scale it and create this, well turn this into our chimney. So I'm just going to scale and I'm going to get just a rough chimney shape. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy or fancy. So now I have that there. I'm going to go, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to use the move tool to kind of just put it into where the chimney should go. Just like that. And I want it to kind of hover above it. I don't want it going inside or anything like that because we're going to basically attach these two objects together. And now, when we, like we went over in the NURPS uh, lesson, we basically parented them together. We're going to actually combine these into one object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face, and I'm going to delete this face here. What that does is it gives us two holes for where we're going to attach the object. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to object mode. And I'm going to drag a box around the two objects, or you could hold shift and select them separately. It's really up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to mesh, and then combine. Now this combine tool is very important. It basically says, hey, this object right here and this object right here are actually just one object. So the computer recognizes it as one object. If you don't do that step, nothing is going to work from now on. So very important, very useful step. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to mesh tools and I'm going to use the append to polygon tool. What that does is it'll have the holes on my object highlighted 
and I'm actually going to be able to start creating new polygons using those as pretty much an area to sew together. So it's good that we have these as one object. It's bad that they have a hole in between the two of them. So let's fill that hole. So what I'll do is while I'm on the Penta Polygon tool, so Mesh Tools, Penta Polygon, I'll select on one of these edges and you'll see these pink arrows pop up. These pink arrows designate where a hole is. And I'm just going to click right across to where I want it to connect, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the G key just so it'll finish it, have it as one new face, and I can work on the next piece. It's very important that you do, do that every single time just so everything gets nice, nicely put together. So one side will go directly across the other side, and then G. One side, oops, missed it. One side directly across the other side, G. And lastly, I'll add one right here. So now our whole object is one object which is great. We have a nice chimney and now we can do some chimney details which isn't really necessary but I like doing it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create an extrusion. I'm going to bring it up like this and I'm using that to create essentially the lip of our chimney. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to press G to do another extrusion, scale it inwards. I'm going to do another extrusion, bring it on down and that's going to just create that inside of our chimney and now we can work with the outer portion of our chimney. So I'm just going to select all of these. I'm going to hit Control E or Command E for an extrusion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these arrows and I'm going to pull it out. And that's going to create the lip of our chimney. After that, you pretty much have the basic tools of modeling done for polygonal modeling. So I hope you learned something and create great things. Thanks.